Saints did not do themselves any favors. They dropped to seven and eight on the season. I mentioned the Rams have won five of six, and I mentioned they're now sixth in the NFC. Just how dangerous could this team be? I think there's no doubt they've got to be the fourth best team in the NFC now. Totally agree. And you just said they've won five of six, and the game they lost was an overtime loss to the Baltimore Ravens where they lost on a punt return. That's right. I mean, this offense is cooking. They cooked the Browns a couple weeks back. They scored a bunch of points against the Ravens. Tonight, they looked great. They had some special teams blunders. But you look at this Rams team, as long as they play decent defense, which tonight they did, they are going to be a tough matchup in the playoffs. And it all starts with this man, Matthew Stafford. Yeah. I mean, that play right there, absurd. He's extending plays. And here, you look at him again, off his back foot, boom. How accurate are these throws, even when he's under pressure? It's ridiculous. We talked about the touchdown earlier. Here, again, he becomes Patrick Mahomes for a little bit. Boom, <laughs> sidearm. Got him on the sideline. Explosive play. It, it, it just, it's hard for me to fathom that this guy doesn't get the credit he deserves. And again, we talked about that throw. He is so good. And Jay, when, when I played with the Lions and he was our quarterback, he had every single tool and attribute you wanted in a quarterback. He sat there. He has an electric arm. You saw it tonight. It's wildly accurate. He was accountable for things he didn't, shouldn't have any to be accountable for. He's always taking the blame. And I don't think there's a guy right now in the NFL that processes the game like he does. You see those highlights? He's always moving his feet, his eyes, his head, because he's going through his checkdowns. Right. How many times have we been on the show saying, hey, this guy's not really reading the game. He's, you know, I think the ball should go here. If it's covered, I got to figure something else out. Yeah. That's not Matthew Stafford. It's not him. He's going to go right through it. He's been playing so well. And so much credit, I think, has to go to the GM of this team, Les Snead, and the head coach of this team, Sean McVay, who, Luke, a, a, as little as a year ago, we thought McVay was maybe going to walk away, maybe go into broadcasting. It looked like the Rams were heading downward, not upward. Uh, Snead and McVay, how much credit do they deserve here for their success? A lot. I mean, you have Cooper Cup there. Obviously, they picked him a couple of years back. But you look at Puka Nakua, Kyron Williams. I mean, these guys are playing at an incredibly high level. And now, all of a sudden, Matthew Stafford and all the talent I just talked about has weapons around him and a run game. Yeah. Kyron Williams has been great. And Puka Nakua... What's impressing me about his game right now is that it's not just, hey, I'm a bigger body. I can kind of play basketball as a receiver. He's really doing it all. You saw the yeah. touchdown early, kind of quick throw on him. He's had some deep shots. And then again, now you're adding in Marcus Robinson to the fold. I mean, even Higby is looking a little like mm -hmm. he's turned back the clock a little bit. Had a couple of nice yeah. catches today. So a couple of years ago, they sold the farm or sold out, if you want to, if you will, for a Super Bowl. And everyone said, okay, it's their only shot. Yeah. They got this thing done. And it was like, we don't have draft picks. We have cap issues. Well, they seem to defeat that narrative because this team is going to be tough to beat in the playoffs. And probably, you know, as long as Snead and McVay, you have that sort of singular vision of two guys. You know a team's going to be good for a long time if they're both on the same page. The Saints, on the other hand, now below 500. But amazingly, Luke, the NFC South, very much winnable for the Saints still. What do you make of this division? Because whoever does win this division will likely host a playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys yeah. or the Philadelphia Eagles. And get bounced. I mean, <laughs> and get bounced. Maybe yeah. Tampa with Mike Evans. I could see them having some a big play here sure. and there. But the Saints tonight were wildly disappointing. I, I, you come out here, huge playoff implications. Thursday night, it's a primetime game, and this score was way closer than what should have been. Again, Rams missed a field goal, the block punt there. But to me, it started with situational football. You start here early in the game. It's third and seven. You got a veteran quarterback. You get sacked out of field goal range. Now, all of a sudden, next drive, fourth and five, we go for it. Not sure why. We get sacked out of field goal range. And this is on the head coach, but fourth and five, Matthew Stafford is cooking, and you get... You get an incompletion, which then leads to a touchdown, and the Rams got the ball in the third quarter. And then, of course, you're down 13. It's third and six. You still have a ton of time in this game. It's only a two-score game, but we got to force a bad throw. And it's plays like that where I just find it, like, this team's supposed to be a playoff team. Yeah. You can't make those types of mistakes, especially in the playoffs where the margin for error is so small because everyone you play will capitalize like the Rams did today. Do you like the Bucs to win this division over the Saints? I do. I mean, yeah. it's a it's a funky division because yeah. it seems like 
That's no a nice way to good. put it. Yes. <laughs> but I do think the Bucks certainly is trending in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Where you lay an egg really like the Saints did tonight, it's tough to rebound, you know, at this late in the year. And like you said, knowing as a player that, hey, we're not very good. We have very poor fundamentals. Our situational football flat out stinks. Yeah. And if we do sneak in, we're going to see Dallas or Philly uh, again. It could be a bloodbath. <laughs> yes. uh, we got a great yeah, a couple of games on Saturday. What I love about, you know, college football being over, Luke, you get some Saturday football. Saturday games are fun. They are. Uh, eight and six Bengals, uh, two and a half point favorite of the seven, seven Steelers. And you got Mason Rudolph uh, under center for the Steelers. Luke. Yeah, Mason Rudolph, you know, it's Christmas time. I'm not sure if that's going to give him a little bit of a boost. But other than that, I expect the Bengals to come in here and absolutely embarrass the Steelers. And then at 8 Eastern, the 8-6 and six Bills, 12-and-a-half point favorites. That's ridiculous. How is this line not 19-20? to 20? <laughs> I can't I can't fathom it. It opened at 10-and-a-half, Jay. Yeah, you have uh, no starting quarterback. Uh, you fired your head coach. Uh, the Chargers just playing out the string, which is... Which is setting up for a trap game in some ways. Trap game, trap game. (laughs) So so let's hope the Bills uh, take care of business for the Mafia's sakes.